back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show uh, with my good friend, Mike the Nick Nichols, attorney at law. And may I say, Nick, you know, you've been on a lot of shows with Craig Russell, The Muscle, and I. And this is the first time we are utilizing Zoom in an effort to put out some entertaining show business, legalese, whatever you want to call it. A show, right. I don't know. What would you call it? Well, we're trying to make it more interesting by putting us in at least 3D. And we got the sunglasses on, even though it's, is it 830 in Mount Pleasant? It's 830 in East Lansing. Are we in the same time zone? I'm not sure. <laughs> yes. East Lansing, Michigan. And Mount Pleasant are in the Eastern time zone. That's well, great. And, and we are wearing sunglasses because we're doing a, the, a marijuana version of the legal podcast this evening, afternoon, morning, depending upon when you're watching it. So the fact that we're talking about marijuana, we've got the banner behind me, the the famous Todd L. Levin. That's a leaf. Yes. Marijuana Law podcast here. And, uh, you know... Uh, what what a, a expensive production we have going here, Mike. Expensive. You know, I was in a hearing uh, in Gaylord, Michigan, on Tuesday, and we had a lot of testimony about the chemical makeup of THC and how so many isomers. So all of our friends from high school who are better than us at chemistry know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. It, it it's one slight almost indistinguishable difference from the psychoactive compound of what's in the marijuana plant, THC, sure. and what's maybe not impairing or much less impairing. And really the Michigan State Police Laboratory has a hard time distinguishing them among all of those different isomers. Yeah, so and, something I mean, some every potential juror should, should know. And you're an attorney, and, and not to deviate from the conversation, but you've been practicing law with your wife, who's also an attorney, Nichols, Wendy Nichols, at Nichols Law Firm in East Lansing, Michigan. I have been practicing as a criminal defense licensed restoration attorney. But, Mike, you wrote, you published a book, a uh, criminal procedure handbook, amongst other uh, publications that you've authored, that us attorneys utilize in our everyday practice of law. And the information you have in here regarding this issue of THC is fantastic right. as a defense attorney. And my experience as a defense attorney is there's no correlation between impairment and THC. So, you know, uh, when all these laws changed in Michigan around 2008, medical, we're now a recreational state, um, individuals were getting stopped, uh, arrested, sobriety tests at the roadside. There was no alcohol. There was just THC. And they would plead guilty in the end to operating while visibly impaired. Come full circle, I fight. I, I started fighting those cases and arguing that point and, and had some success based on the information you provided in your publication. As you should, because there is no correlation between a number. Like if you have five nanograms of per milliliter, of THC in your system when your blood is drawn, that doesn't mean that you're intoxicated. That doesn't mean anything. It's just like if you are prescribed a drug and you drive and you've developed a tolerance for that drug and maybe you have an accident just because it's no fault of your own. They do a blood draw and they see you've got your, your pain medication on board some sort of Z drug, benzodiazepine. And they say, oh man, you're intoxicated. You're not intoxicated. That means nothing. That means the doctor prescribed you something three years ago, five years ago, three months ago, and you had an accident. It's correlation, not causation. And that's a big difference. Yeah, I mean, reefer madness actually been around for hundreds of years, yeah. Uh, the, the marijuana plant has been around tens of thousands of years. Some say it started in what we now call China or the Asian Pacific Rim, Afghanistan. Uh, but it, Reefer Madness, for those that don't know this, 
there was a movie, Mike, in the early 1930s, yes. Yes. which was known as a propaganda film back then. And a principal in the movie was, um, you know, educating the parents about the effects of marijuana and yeah. what it would cause on the young men and women. It would cause them to want to have sex, listen to music back in the 30s they shouldn't be listening to. Like jazz. Guess, jazz. I mean, jazz. You know, that's where the Andrews sisters, you know, right. you know, you know, or, that's or, or my relatives, uh, Tommy and Jimmy Dorsey. I'm really? third cousins from Tommy and Jimmy Dorsey. Wow. That's yeah. Fantastic. The devil's like, music. But back, we want, I want to talk about that, but back to the movie, that's where the term Reefer Madness came yeah. from. And in 2005, mm -hmm. there was a musical about Reefer Madness. But to me, Reefer Madness has always been how people who have no knowledge about hemp, THC, the flower, the genetics behind it, um, the benefits medically, you know, never touched it, never utilized it. There was so much madness that grew up. We call it, you know, reefer madness, and it does exist. It's, reefer madness, madness is, is still out there. I, you and I have been advocating free the weed, and now, thank goodness, in this country, so many states, if not all of them, are medical recreation or some kind of combination. But until the federal government removes cannabis from Schedule One and to Schedule Three or out of the schedules. The reefer man is still exists out there, but it's yeah, with, like with the movie. Paul Armentano, who's a big, you know, advocate and and a friend of all of us at Normal, says, "Don't reschedule it. Deschedule it. That's Let's what I'm deschedule saying. it." Right. right. Yeah. And recently, we just talked about this, Craig Russell, the Muscle, and I. And you're coming on the podcast version of the Title Level Law Show uh, coming up uh, this Sunday on 98.5 UPS and podcasting on every podcasting platform. This is YouTube. You. you. So please subscribe to this channel. And also tell the listeners a little, about your, a little bit about yourself, Mr. Attorney at Law, Mike Nichols. You, I consider you and your wife two of the smartest lawyers I know. Truly. Oh, that's, no, I, I appreciate no, that. But, no satire. Um, that is nothing but the truth. I'm just a hardworking kid from Northern Michigan. I grew up proud to say this. Uh, Northeast Higgins Lake, went to Roscommon High School. My grade point average was pathetic, maybe a 2.0 if the secretary in the office gave me some extra credit for working in the office. And then uh, I ended up going to Kirtland Community College. A lot of our listeners are familiar with Kirtland. I was at community Oakland Community College, same here. And did a contracting with business and industry program. And then I ended up, took some time off, worked in radio. And then decided I'm going to go back to school, went to Lansing Community College because I was living in East Lansing by then. And then just decided I'm going to finish my undergraduate degree. I'm going to go to law school. Don't ask me why, because that's a long story. I, I could tell you, but it's a very long story as to why I decided to, to take that path. But here I am advocating for justice in the greatest imperfect system ever known to human civilization and that's the American criminal justice system. Absolutely. That's the short version of the story, brother. Absolutely. And I mean, you have represented some very high profile uh, defendants, individuals. Uh, you were a TV broadcaster for a period of time. Uh, I, I, I was in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan here, which is located. If you're not from Michigan, we look like a hand. You see, we're, right. the, we're the midst. And then we have the Upper Peninsula, right? We both do it. Hey, where are you from? I'm from right here. And I ran into somebody who was from the area in which you were broadcasting. Lansing, and yeah, kind of. Lansing, so kind of Lansing. I think they, they were from a, Onondaga. Yeah, Onondaga. True story. Tell the story. I had to put you on the phone. They were so excited. They, they remembered that. watching me on Channel Ten. Yeah, yeah. that was a great little reunion. Yeah. But back to uh, Reefer Madness. We want to end Reefer Madness once and for all and declassify. For sure canvas outside of schedule the schedule altogether should not be it should never have been scheduled together with heroin and cocaine there, there's right. there's just right. look you and i as defense attorneys it's not we, the same but we have fought the fight for decades we saw people with just grams get jacked and whacked and put on probation for in a, a cage year. put put yeah. in a cage for a gram yeah i'm talking a pea 
For, how about all the forfeiture laws? Everything, I mean, all the pain and suffering, and now it's come full circle. There's no reason why Washington, D.C. does not, I mean, the DHS, we talked about this on my last show, recommended the DEA to declassify it or remove it to a different schedule. See what happens. What do you, what's your thoughts on that? Do yeah, no, I'm, I'm the same way. We, we need to research the the plant and, uh, and all of its der derivatives and, and really try to come up with robust data about, you know, the impacts on the brain if you use it daily or weekly or once a week, twice a week three times a week, what the health effects are, or what the deleterious effects are. We need to research it. More data is better than less data. And I always say, look, even though you have a legal right to do something, which, which most states you do, you don't want to do anything in excess that's going to cause you to be impaired right. to the point where you cannot operate an equipment, get behind a wheel of a motor vehicle, do it responsibly. That's all we're saying. It should, it should have been legal, should never have been illegal to begin with, but... We're not advocating that people go out there and do anything, even though they have the legal right to do it, because you can take medication prescribed by a doctor, take too much, or you can react in such a way that you shouldn't be operating a motor vehicle. Similar, to, just, the con similar to the concepts of the founders, negative liberty, just because you have a First Amendment right to say whatever you want, doesn't mean that you should. Exercise everything responsibly. Absolutely. And you know, each and every podcast and radio show, we do a strain of the week. And that's why I think we should put our sunglasses back on, you know, just to hide the reaction to uh, the strain of the week, which is Fat Kids Cake here on the Todd oh, Eleven wow. Law Show. Fat Kids Cake, great strain. And uh, be sure to check it out. Talk nobody to listens, nobody listens to the fat kid. Yeah, absolutely. But Mike, that was my so cousin Jeffrey. We you, always uh, said that. Look, look at this crack studio I have here. The lighting on this side of my face looks like the other side of the moon. You no, it's, see it's, it. I mean, it's not, it's not 60 minutes grade, but it's, right. not, it's pretty this, good. This is a flashlight studio here. I got flashlights connected to a lamp over here, lighting up my noggin over here. You know, I mean, I listen, if Jen is sitting to your right going like this with a flashlight, she's, she's doing a good job. You, yeah, no, she's holding up cue cards. Like You're not one. <laughs> More information, less, less, you know, no, she's not doing it yet. It's cute You're not washed stuff. out. You look fine. Right, right, right. The dogs are at bay right now because we're at the home studio here for the show. But you are uh, an often guest on the radio show, uh, which I said earlier does air uh, here in Michigan on 98.5 UPS every Sunday morning from 8 to 9 a.m. You'll be coming on this Sunday. Next week. Yeah. Oh, next week. Correct. So, next so week. So stoked about it. Yeah. Today is actually the uh, September 14, 2023, depending upon when someone's watching this. And be, right. be sure to subscribe to the channel, the Todd Eleven Law Show. Subscribe like, to the channel. Easy thing to do. Just thumbs up it and subscribe to it. Subscribe, yeah. So, easy. so I think the you know, to come full circle with this episode, which I appreciate, attorney Mike Nichols from Nichols Law Firm, together with his wife Wendy, coming on the show. How Give out your number for anyone who's watching or listening in Michigan. How can they get a hold of you? And what kind of law does your firm practice? It's 517-256-6961. Uh, Wendy time. has personal injury. Okay. She's really a BA. She so works so hard. Great she's personal smart. lawyer. Yeah. 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 And yeah. She, is she, is she want to come on? Is she right there? No, uh, but Morgan is studying for her geometry uh, test okay. tomorrow, and she's like, "Come, on. Dad I just gave up." I still use an abacus. You know what an abacus is? That's how I <laughs> yes. with the, the balls on the string. Yeah, an abacus. But you're an outstanding attorney. Love having you on the uh, radio show version, which is podcasting on every podcasting platform. This particular show is just on YouTube, but we'll be doing more shows together. Yeah. Uh, we, we spoke earlier in the day today. It's a work day. And I said, Mike, I want to do a quick show on reefer madness uh, because it's still out there. It still exists. And I always say free the weed. So and I don't think I responded to you for a couple hours because I had a court of appeals brief that was due. And I was like, you know, I had I was white knuckling it on the laptop trying to get my stuff done. I know. Is that the case I'm familiar with on the court of appeals? No, no. Different case. <laughs> different what case. You are a busy man. You are very important, okay? You're a VIP. The I'm just a hardworking kid from Higgins Lake, baby. The fact that I have contact Let's with you bucks. throughout the day is amazing because you're, you know, you're like 
I respect her on suits. You're just the man, you know, just telling you. There you go. A little suits reference there on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Right now. Love but suits. Mike, Good show. Good hey, show. I, I do appreciate you coming on the show. Look forward to the radio version podcast of the show a week from this Sunday. Yes, and, sir. Uh, you, you can, if you can uh, look at all the different podcasting platforms. You've appeared on my show, the Todd L. Levitt Law Show podcast version. Just look up Mike Nichols, you know, in the search engine because he'll come up on the headline. So, all right, brother. Bro, views and downloads quadruple when you're on the show. <laughs> you're good for business. Well, we're going to have a really good talk next week about isomers and THC dash yes, ETC, which is a problem for the Michigan State Police. I'll, I'll be ready. Yeah. I mean, they do have a problem with that at the lab, just to sum it up, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just to tease the audience a little bit more, that what we will talk about a week from the Sunday on the other show. And and every case comes down to what is going on with the GC, I'm sorry, the uh, liquid, <laughs> yeah, is marijuana impairing or is it not impairing? Really, that's, that's what every case should come down right. to. right. I mean, we can right. fight about the science all we want, but really, did the marijuana impair the person? And and yeah. if the answer is there's no evidence of that, then the outcome should be status quo, not guilty. You're not saying innocent. You're just saying not guilty. There you go. And with that, Mr. Nichols, we will see you next time. Okay. We, you, and, you and I are always the best versions of who we are and... You and I always say this as close friends. We're not here for a long time. We're here for a good time, Mr. Nichols. <laughs> attorney Mike Nichols in the house. I'm attorney Todd L. Levitt. And uh, we'll catch you on the other side. All right, brother. Talk to you soon. Okay, see you soon.